Hello, my name is Lauren Taylor and I'm so excited to be joining you today on the Trinity Stamps YouTube channel to share some ideas with this adorable multi-porpoise stamp set and coordinating die. When I saw that this was being released from Trinity Stamps, I literally jumped for joy because I am that dolphin girl that you knew growing up, <laughs> or maybe you are yourself. So I have three different ideas today. I wanted to share with you three different projects, and I also have a coloring guide with a few different Ohuhu art marker color combinations for some fun blue, teal, and gray shades of dolphins. I'm going to start with some cool gray, kind of more of a blue tone dolphin color and we're gonna make a scene card using some of the other Trinity stamps releases from their latest release um, so I'm gonna start with creating our background the first product I'm going to use is the wavy lines background stamp this makes an excellent ocean scene and most of my scene on this card is going to be under the sea so I thought I would just use this to create kind of a wavy water background and I'm going to be using my 9x4 slimline mixed media paper pack a sheet of that to create my background instead of loading this big old stamp into my misty I'm just going to kind of attach it to my glass mat here I just kept it on the plastic insert and use my magnets to keep it in place but you know if you're going to recreate this card do what's whatever is most comfortable for you for large background stamping. And I added some anti-static powder to my mixed media cardstock and I put lots of embossing ink onto my background stamp and I'm just going to lay that cardstock right onto my background stamp. I have a little pressure tool that I'm just going to help make sure I can completely cover my cardstock onto the stamp, making sure to really get every little wavy line onto my cardstock. Since I'm embossing and it's clear, it's not like the easiest to see, but you can kind of see it. I'm sure if you've embossed before, you know that you can kind of see where the um, embossing ink is on the cardstock. And then once you apply, apply the embossing powder, you can definitely see where it has embossed onto the cardstock. I used clear embossing powder and I'm going to do some distress ink blending right on top. So kind of like an embossed resist technique. I'm going to start with tumbled glass to be my lighter color of my ocean and it's lighter on top since that's where more sunlight would be and I'm going to use uncharted mariner on the bottom to create more of a deeper ocean bottom and I'm just using my awesome blender tools to get a nice scene and once I'm happy with the color I'm going to grab my distress sprayer to not only clean up my mat but also to add some water droplets to my background. I'm also going to wipe off any ink that's sitting on top of my embossing um, embossed lines just to make sure that those white lines shine through. I didn't care if it was going to be perfect, if I had some spots that didn't, you know, emboss perfectly because it's an ocean scene and I wanted it to look like it was wavy and moving. And then I'm splattering on some blue metallic watercolor just to help create more of a shine onto my ocean. And that's when I thought that I wanted some more shine because I love all things shiny. So I'm grabbing some solar paste. This is from Ranger Ink and dabbing on some of the Beluga solar paste. It is kind of a clear color when it dries and it has a nice kind of uh iridescent or opalescent feel to it and beluga it has a blue tint so I'm just tapping that onto my background especially more towards the bottom where I want it to be deeper in my ocean and that's just going to add a nice shine that you can see here on camera but it's definitely shinier when it's dry and in person. So now that that background part is done, I'm going to work on some other pieces of my scene. I want to have a kind of sandy floor on my ocean. So I grabbed some craft card stock and I went ahead and cut out one of my A2 frames. This is the one that will cut a four inch wide piece so it will match the same width as my mixed media card stock. 
And I'm just ripping part of that piece of craft cardstock because I wanted it to have a very textured edge, like sandy ocean floor. And then I brought in some vintage photo distress ink to kind of darken up the edges of that piece. I will later end up tearing off a little bit more because I wanted more ocean on my background, but you'll see that when I get there. I'm using that same four inch wide um, A2 die to cut some blue cardstock that's gonna be my sky. Again, most of this card will be ocean. So here I am trying to plan out exactly where I wanna trim down my ocean scene to fit onto an A2 card. You could make this a slim line very easily by just st uh, stamping more of those tiny waves, but I'm gonna stick with the A2 card size. I have a few other images that I've added from the Party Pirates um, stamp and cut them out with their coordinating dies as well. And once I know where I need to trim my water, I'm just grabbing some scissors and just trimming along one of the waves. It's not perfect because again, we're going for a moving C. And then underneath the first top line of my wavy lines I'm cutting it again and I'm going to layer these two pieces to uh, be able to tuck my little island in between the two ocean waves so it looks like my island is kind of off in the distance in between those uh, wave pieces. So once that's done, we can start working on assembling the card together. Here's when I realize that it's just too tall. I have too much sand. So I'm going to rip off another piece of this craft card stock and it ends up measuring I'd say about three quarters of an inch tall and I'm going to add a little bit more ink to the edges so that way that ripped line has a little bit more color. Now I'm going to glue my two water pieces together so that way I know how they're going to layer and where I can put them onto my card front which is going to be my sky that's showing so i'm adding some tape runner to the larger ocean piece and then i'm going to tuck the smaller ocean piece um, just behind it again i'm just overlapping so that way i have somewhere where i can tuck my little island in and give it some dimension and make it look like that ocean or i'm sorry that island is far away in the distance so I glued that onto my sky piece that's going to be my card front and I wanted to add a little bit of dimension so I'm grabbing some thinner foam strips and I'm just going to apply this to the bottom of my card. You can see I have a little space there. Um, I wanted more of that deeper blue ocean to show so I didn't glue it all the way to the bottom of that background. And then I'm adding some foam adhesive to the back of my craft piece of cardstock and then gluing those together. All three pieces are four inches wide, but I didn't get it lined up perfectly, which is fine. Just grabbing some large scissors and trimming off that little piece of the mixed media cardstock that was sticking out the side. So now that that background is done, I'm going to work on adding in my images. I'm going to use some wet glue for my images that will be further um, in the back. So like my little island that I'm tucking in here between those two water pieces, as well as my clouds. Uh, those are also from the Party Pirate stamp set and just gluing those along the top of the sky and I had the clouds kind of go off the sides a little bit. I wanted my scene to extend just a bit um, again to make it look like it's much further away. And then the two little pieces that I stamped and die cut and colored from Party Pirates as well. I'm adding these to my ocean floor. So my sand is popped up. So when I glue these pieces down, anything that is touching the blue background needs to also be popped up. And anything that's overlapping on that sandy floor is gonna get some wet glue. So I'm just putting in a couple cute little things on the bottom of my ocean. And then I have three of my little dolphins or porpoises. We're going with dolphins because again, I love dolphins. And once I have a layout figured out, I'm going to pop these up as well. So just grabbing some foam adhesive. Again, I'm choosing a thickness that matches my sandy floor. So that way my dolphins will be kind of on the same level of thickness as the rest of my popped up um, parts of this card. So I'm going to get all three of my dolphins glued down. 
and that will finish up adding in my stamped images. So let's go ahead and figure out our sentiment. I thought I would go with kind of a generic sentiment, but there are so many that you can choose from from this stamp set. So if you're recreating this card at home, choose your favorite. And I'm stamping on some blue cardstock that I thought matched the vibe of my blues and mints and teals on my card. And I'm stamping in a darker blue ink. I went ahead and used the coordinating die, which is my, one of my favorite things about Trinity stamps are the uh, coordinating dies for the sentiments. So great. I love that bubble cut look. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this up as well. So using that same foam, so that way I have consistent thickness. I'm adding some foam strips behind my sentiment, and then I will pop that up to the front of my card in that little open area towards the top right. Now that my card front is done, let's get it onto a card base. This is an A2 top folding card base out of some sturdy Nina white card stock. And I'm going to use my tape runner to attach this to the center of my card base. There's going to be a little bit of a white border. If you don't like to show white border, you can add some ink around the edges or add another layer of card stock. I like a little bit of the white border, so I'm pretty happy with how this card is coming along. To add a little bit of bling, I'm going to grab my enamel dots. These are the rainbow glitter enamel dots, and I'm going to use my little pokey tool to help pull them up off of the plastic background. And then I'm just going to layer them kind of how I think they would look nice around the card. I have different sizes, and I go from larger towards the bottom and smaller to the top. I thought they gave a look of bubbles, and they turned out really cute. So here is a close-up look at this adorable little scene card, which is our first project using the multi-purpose stamp set. For our second project, we're going to get a little interactive. I've colored in my dolphin using more of a blue tone, and we have lots of goodies here. Again, some items from the new release, some just good classic items to have in your stash, and we're going to create a shaker card using the modern embossed window panel number one to create our shaker window. I have the Love Danny 6x6 paper collection and I grabbed a sheet of blue card stock and I'm going to use this to be my shaker front. So I'm going to die cut my panel using this striped card stock and my panel die. I was originally going to use one of the new shaker pockets to create my shaker, but I ended up changing my mind. So I just kind of skipped over that. So we're going to jump right into creating the back of our shaker. And I'm using the same colors as I did for my first card. So Tumbled Glass and Uncharted Mariner. And I went to add lighter color in the middle and darker around the outside, but color it however you would like. And then again, I love shine. So I'm grabbing that solar paste again in Beluga and adding a nice thin layer. Here you can really see that shine. It's so pretty and it just adds some nice little fun to my shaker window. When that is drying, I thought we would jump into adding some of our images that will be um, around the window of my shaker. So I grabbed the Sea Life Silhouettes stamp set, and I'm gonna stamp these different pieces in different colors onto this white piece of cardstock. So I have some green kind of kelpie seaweed. I have some orange coral. I have another coral, which is more of a pink color. I'm just going to keep going through different colors of the rainbow. This is like a sea anemone in purple and then the sea rocky plant life scene in blue. There is a coordinating die set, but I wanted very minimal white lines or white borders. So I fussy cut those out and I'm going to start building up my shaker. My background is dry, so I can go ahead and get my acetate ready. So I decided to just use some acetate sheets and I'm using that circle that was die cut out of the panel to be the guide of how to trim my acetate windows down. So just cut both of those to be larger than the opening. 
and have plenty of room for this quarter inch adhesive from Trinity Stamps. I'm going around the edge of my circle, just kind of bending it a little bit as I go around so I could just have one piece of adhesive rather than lots of little pieces. So this is just my way of being able to quickly get some adhesive around a circle. Go ahead and peel up that release paper and then I went to add my acetate window and as soon as I lift it up I'm going to remember that I wanted to tuck all of these little sea life and plant images in between the circle front and the front acetate layer of the shaker. So luckily I was able to peel that off no problem and because I have that uh, adhesive behind my panel I'm just adding in my little plant life pieces and they are sticking to that double-sided adhesive tape. So I'm going around I, that blue piece will be on the back side of the shaker so I'm just using it as a guide to be able to add in the rest of my colorful plants and know that I still will get a very good view of that blue background once I put my shaker together. So now that all of my plant life pieces are tucked in behind the circle I'm adding a little bit more adhesive so my acetate circle has something to hold on to and I went ahead and put that circle right back on to create the front of my shaker. Trinity Stamps has some excellent thickness for shakers in foam strips so I'm using those to wrap around my circle opening. I'm getting as close as I can to the edge without going past the edge so that way you don't see the foam but I also want to make sure that my shaker bits are definitely always in view of my um, inside my shaker. So I'm going to go ahead and make a flat edge to my shaker since you won't see it behind the plant life and I'm going to make sure that I have a very snug fit anywhere where I had to add another piece of foam adhesive. So my shaker panel is ready to go and I'm going to add the same foam adhesive around the edge of my panel so that way it will adhere to the card base at the same thickness as my shaker. I'm making my own little mix of shaker bits and I'm using the Boca Dot Flat Confetti Embellishment Mix, the Puddle Jumping Iridescent Raindrop Confetti Mix, and some White Sparkle Spots Flat Confetti, which I think are my favorite. <laughs> They're so beautiful. I love them so much. And I went ahead and put them into my shaker window, creating my own little mix. I just wanted to have a bubbly water feel and I thought these, these colors were so pretty together. So now at the back of my shaker, or I'm sorry, my shaker is done, I can add the back to my shaker, which is that other piece of acetate circle. I'm shaking it up and making sure that it is snug and I don't have little shaker bits flying everywhere and everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and adhere my decorations to the back of the shaker, which are going to be this blue um, sea life scene. So I'm adding a little bit of adhesive behind the shaker where I know the adhesive won't be seen and then I'm going to adhere my blue uh, sea life images to the back of my shaker. So all my shaker bits are going to be in between which is pretty cool. I The image is larger than I need so I just trimmed off that little piece and I'm going to go ahead and glue it. I want to include it because you know why not more the merrier in our ocean scene here. And now that that's done, I'll peel off the release paper off of my foam and I'm adding some glue behind my paper uh, scene here and then adding that shiny shimmery blue background that I created. So now you looks like there's a really pretty blue ocean on the back side of our shaker. Getting another top folding A2 card base ready and I'm going to add some adhesive behind that extra piece of mixed media card stock. This is you know an extra piece from the first card and I do not waste in my craft room so it was perfect to create the background of this second card, our shaker card. My scoring was a little off so just trimming any part of the card that can be seen and now I have a nice A2 shaker card ready to go. My dolphin's going to go on the top of my shaker and I'm going to create my own sentiment. I'm going to do a mix and match. So I will have a, an embossed sentiment from the multi-porpoise stamp set and I'm going to do created with porpoise and then I'm going to die cut 
using the new party alphabet stamp set and coordinating dies actually just the coordinating dies not the stamp set and I'm going to die cut you are so it's going to create this really cute sentiment you are created with porpoise and I'm also going to use the sticky adhesive sheets so that way I can layer my two different die cuts from this party alphabet die set and uh, the adhesive will already be on the back side of my cardstock. So for the shadow dies of the UR, I'm using this kind of blue vellum, uh, iridescent vellum, and I cut my little sheet here to be slightly smaller than the cardstock. And I'm gonna put the vellum on top of the sticker sheet, and then I can go ahead and use some repositionable tape to make sure my letters are die cut where I want them out of that vellum with the adhesive on the back side. And I'm gonna repeat that same process for the letters on that darker blue cardstock. And once those are done, you can apply them to your card front just like a sticker. Now my camera did not record that part and I'm so sorry, but here you can see I've added my UR just like stickers to the front of my panel. And then I added that created with porpoise um, again, an embossed sentiment onto the front of the card and glued my dolphin like it was coming up from out of the shaker. So here is a close-up look at our second card, which is an interactive shaker card. Such a fun little scene. I love the colors and that cute little dolphin smiling. For the last project, I'm going to use more of a brown gray, kind of a warmer gray tone for my dolphins. And we're gonna create a treat box and we're gonna build a scene using the Undersea Adventure stencil set. So I'm gonna cut out two of these treat box die cuts from some Nina Solar White cardstock and you can get both of these out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of ink blending. I wanted to create a scene using my stencil set, but I'm only going to do it on the bottom of my treat box and I'm gonna have it fade into white on the top. So you'll see here as I get my stencils ready how I'm gonna distress and add ink to these boxes. So I want my scene to try to flow as best as it can around the whole box. I obviously will have a very nice cohesive scene where the two pieces attach where I use some repositionable tape. It doesn't perfectly line up on the other two edges, but I think I do a pretty good job. So it just takes some practice, but again, your receiver of the treat box, I don't think will notice if it's not a cohesive scene around all four sides of your box, but we're gonna do our best here. So I started with adding some vintage photo distress ink along the bottom of my treat box and I'm just using that opening of my little sandy beach to add in that color. Once that is all done, I'm going to mask it with the stencil cutout, which is really nice that you get both the um, actual stencil so you can color the sand and then you can also mask it so you can color another part of the stencils. And for this next layer, I'm going to add in a little bit of sea life. And so I'm just lining it up onto one side of my background and I'm using my magnets. This is a magnetic glass mat to uh, hold my stencil in place. And I'm gonna use bundled sage to color in my sea life and the next little kind of I want to say grassy hill, but this is underwater, so it's not grass. It's sea grass. Just adding some plant life and want it to look more like a silhouette in the background. So I added some to the left, and I'm going to wipe off and clean my stencil, and I'm going to add a little bit on to the right. Again, using that floor cutout to mask the brown, and then adding in the green through the stencil. Once that's done, that's all the details I really wanted to add. I'm going to color the rest blue. So I went ahead and took my two pieces apart and I'm masking my sea life and I have a little bit of my brown kind of showing. So I'm just going to use some masking tape to hide that. And then I'm bringing in Uncharted Mariner to color in my ocean. So again, I don't want it to color all the way to the top of the box. So I'm adding the darkest part of the ocean on the bottom. So starting on the stencil and blending 
onto my treat box and I'm stopping just about where that score line is so that way my C just looks like it kind of fades up into white. I'm going to do one side of my box and then I'll set that aside and I'll do the other side. So lining up my stencil to cover up that sea life on the right and then I will use my little blending brush to add in that Uncharted Mariner to the treat box. So again starting on the stencil and blending off and only going to about that score line a little bit higher to add in my ocean scene. Once I have my green sea life, especially that kind of kelpy seaweed uh, colored around, I'm just going to grab the mask for the brown, the ground, and finish coloring in on my treat box. Making sure I have it the right way and then using magnets to keep my stencil in place to be able to um, mask off that the brown to be able to add in the blue ink. So. Again, starting on the stencil so it's darkest towards the bottom and then going up to the score line. It's not completely perfect, but coloring in just how I like it, I, it's a very, I want my ocean to look like it's moving. And I'm going to do actually a little bit of heat foiling or hot foil on top of a couple of my panels on this box. So I grabbed the Shimmer School Cut and Foil die set, and I'm just going to do the little school of fish. And I'm going to use gold or this is polished brass but it has a, a gold tone to it and I'm trimming this foil piece to be just around the edge of my fishes because I don't want any over foiling as I'm not going to be die cutting this out I'm going to foil this directly onto my treat box which I know is daring <laughs> but I really love the look once I have my foil trimmed down to fit perfectly around my little school of fish, I'm going to place the foil pretty side up on my tree box and then put the fish design side down on top of that. And I have some tape that I can keep my um, hot foil plate and my hot foil in place while I use my glimmer hot foil machine to add that image. And here you can see those adorable little fish. I had a teensy tiny bit of overfoiling, but you can't tell and it looks so cool. And then for the other one, I actually did it over the score line. So it's gonna look really cool with these fish, look like they're swimming around the edge of the treat box. I didn't do a very good job as you can see of masking my bottom because so I was in my head I was thinking it's the bottom of the box it's it's okay if it looks ugly but the more I tried to tell myself self that the more I didn't like that I didn't mask off the bottom so I'm masking off my scene which will be the sides of the treat box and I'm just going to bring in that vintage photo to add brown to the bottom of my treat box to match the ground so now that those two pieces are done and ready to be created into a treat box, I'm grabbing my little scoring tool here and my quarter inch adhesive roll and we're going to use the scoring tool to fold all of the different score lines on these two pieces and then I will start adhering them together. So I am folding all those lines on both sides and I'm going to figure out how I like the bottom of the treat box to know where I need to put my adhesive tape. So I decide to glue the two shortest ends on the very bottom of the box. So they will have adhesive on the underside because I thought I would hide some of those weird green lines that I had on the bottom flaps. So I'm gonna add my tape adhesive to the two tabs and those glue together in order to enclose the box. And then I added the adhesive on the white side of the smaller tabs. So I'm going to peel off the release paper and glue these two boxes together. And as you can see, I didn't do too bad of a job with my stenciling. It doesn't line up perfectly, but it looks very cohesive. So I'm happy with how that turned out. And then I am gluing my box together. So it's an actual box. With those in place, we can work on the bottom flaps. The two larger flaps overlap just a teensy tiny bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of wet glue to keep those together. And then I will peel off the release paper from the smaller flaps. 
I put three different quarter inch lines because I really want to make sure that they stay closed and went ahead and apply pressure to make sure that that flap is adhering down in place and then I'll do the other side again peeling off the release paper and then adding some pressure to make sure that all four of those flaps are adhered together and creating the bottom of my treat box. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and close it up so I can decorate the outside of the treat box. And I think this looks so cute on its own. It definitely doesn't need anything else. But again, I want to show how you can use the multi-purpose stamp set in many ways, which I just realized I'm doing the multi-purpose stamp set in a multi-purpose of ways. <laughs> Oh goodness. Okay, so now I'm going to glue on my dolphins. I have three more and I have one here like he's swimming along with the school of fish and then I'm going to flip the box over and add the other two. I'm adding one where it's going to overlap in front of the green seaweed or the sea life in the background and then my last dolphin is actually going to be more towards the top of the treat box. going to have it look like this one is swimming a little higher in the water and just using some wet glue to glue them down. I thought about using foam adhesive, but as it's a treat box, I want to make sure nothing gets snagged on it. So I'm just going to glue these directly to the treat box. And finally, I wanted to add a happy birthday sentiment. So I'm going to stamp the happy birthday sentiment from the multi-purpose stamp set. Some blue... Uh, ink onto some white cardstock and then use the coordinating die to die cut that out. Just like the dolphins, I'm going to just glue it directly to the treat box. So adding some more liquid adhesive to the back side of the sentiment and then I'm going to center it as best as I can onto the top of the treat box on the other side of the dolphin. And that will finish off our cute little treat box. So here is a close-up look at our happy birthday sentiment, our dolphins, the really pretty gold fishes along the edges. I love this little school here that goes around the corner. I think it looks so cute. So one more final look at all of the projects. We have our treat box, our shaker interactive card, and our little scene here, underwater scene. And I love how different they all look yet using the same stamp set. I'm going to have a still picture of my coloring guide at the end of this video so you can take a screenshot if you need to. One more look at this adorable treat box, but I am so excited to be a part of the Trinity Stamps video design team. I hope you found some inspiration using the multi-purpose stamp set, and I'm looking forward to bringing you more content, but make sure you check out all of Trinity Stamps social media, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!